Today we're going to be taking a look at hypoparathyroidism, which is a condition that involves low levels of PTH in the blood. To start this topic, it's worth reviewing the basic anatomy and physiology of the parathyroid glands. And if you remember, we have four parathyroid glands which sit on the posterior aspect of the thyroid gland, uh, with one of them being labelled here. In response to low levels of calcium or high levels of phosphate, the parathyroid gland begins to secrete PTH or parathyroid hormone into the blood. This PTH then acts to increase serum calcium levels and decrease serum phosphate, thereby restoring the balance. Importantly, this whole process is governed by a negative feedback loop. So as the levels of calcium increase, it should feed back on the parathyroid gland to decrease PTH production. And this helps to keep the whole system in check. It's worth taking a closer look at how exactly parathyroid hormone achieves its effects on the electrolytes. And it does this by acting on different systems within the body. The first system which parathyroid hormone acts upon is the renal system. And if we take a closer look, we can see that when parathyroid hormone binds to its receptors in the distal convoluted tubules, or the collecting ducts, it triggers the movement of calcium from the ducts back into the blood. This means that less calcium is lost in the urine and more is reabsorbed back into the blood. At the same time, this binding process restricts the movement of phosphate back into the blood, so more phosphate is lost in the urine. You can see that the overall effect of this is therefore to increase renal calcium reabsorption and increase phosphate excretion into the urine. The second system which parathyroid hormone acts upon is the gastrointestinal system. In this case, parathyroid hormone activates a specific enzyme called 1-alpha-hydroxylase, and when this enzyme is activated, it catalyzes the conversion of an inactive form of vitamin D to the active form of vitamin D. And when there's more of the active form of vitamin D, it helps to retain calcium within the GI system, allowing more to be reabsorbed back into the blood. The final system which parathyroid hormone acts upon is the skeletal system. And the way this works is that parathyroid hormone increases the activity of specific osteoclasts, which are basically these enzymes that lead to bone resorption. When these osteoclasts act on the bone, they help to release calcium back into the blood, thereby leading to the electrolyte changes described on the previous slide. Let's now take a closer look at the pathophysiology of hypoparathyroidism where there's a reduction in the levels of parathyroid hormones secreted in the blood. There can be a multitude of reasons which lead to hyperparathyroidism, but some of the key causes to know about include autoimmune damage, so where the body's own immune cells attack the parathyroid glands, uh, previous parathyroid surgery, which could be in response to hyperparathyroidism, or genetic causes, so for example, the George syndrome or familial hyperparathyroidism. The way of thinking about the condition is that it impairs the activity of parathyroid hormone, so all of the systems discussed on the previous slide are slightly hindered. So for example, in the renal system, there's a reduction in renal calcium reabsorption and less phosphate excreted into the urine. In the GI system, there's reduced vitamin D activation and therefore reduced calcium reabsorption. And in the skeletal system, there's reduced osteoclast activation. You can see that the overall effect of this is therefore a low PTH level, a low calcium level because less is being reabsorbed, and a high phosphate level because less is being excreted. Turning towards the signs and symptoms of hypoparathyroidism, these are largely dependent on the low calcium and high phosphate levels within the blood. And just to recap, one of the hallmark features of hypocalcemia is neuromuscular irritability where patients experience muscle spasms, tingling, and involuntary muscle contractions. And there are two key signs to be aware of for hypocalcemia, which include Schwostek sign, which is basically twitching of the facial muscles after the facial nerve is stimulated, and Trousseau sign, which is when there's muscle spasms following the blood pressure cuff inflation. Other possible symptoms of hypocalcemia include seizures and arrhythmias, particularly long QT syndrome. Some of the other generic symptoms of hypoparathyroidism include abdominal pain, dry skin, confusion, and fatigue, and these all occur due to the imbalance of electrolytes. 
Moving on to the diagnosis of hypoparathyroidism, this is largely a biochemical diagnosis, looking for a reduced PTH level, a reduced calcium level, and an increased phosphate level. It's also worth looking at other bloods, including magnesium, albumin, and vitamin D, as these can affect all of the involved electrolytes as well. Aside from this, we can also look towards autoimmune screening, looking for other endocrine hormone conditions, for example, thyroid hormone or adrenal hormone deficits. In some instances, it might be worth conducting genetic studies, especially if an inherited cause of the condition is suspected. For the management of hypoparathyroidism, the mainstay of treatment is hormone replacement. So the low levels of PTH can be replaced directly with oral recombinant PTH tablets. At the same time, it's worth correcting other deficits. So for example, low calcium levels can be corrected by taking regular calcium tablets, which is often calcium carbonate. Low vitamin D levels can also be corrected by taking colocalciferol, which allows more of the active form of vitamin D to act within the body. In severe cases of hypocalcemia, where a patient presents acutely, it's worth replacing the calcium with IV calcium gluconate and corresponding vitamin D replacement to supplement this. And here we have a quick summary slide outlining everything I've gone through in the video. I hope you found this helpful and I'll see you in the next one.